Greetings, my dear Earthlings. Today I have come to you as Commander-in-Chief of Space Fleet to talk about the processes that are now in progress in near-Earth space. Perhaps, many of you have already realized that the fight between the dark and the light forces on Earth has reached its supreme stage. At present it is conspicuous at all the levels of existence this time. The events that are taking place are to draw a final line under the third dimension world on your planet eventually to bury it. It is the only way for the new world to come to effect and for people to start transforming a new high vibration space not only in terms of energy this time but in practice as well abolishing old institutions of power and creating new centers for society coordination and government. Right now there is being made an attempt to revive those who are potentially ready to wake. That is exactly the reason why all the demands of the deep state marionettes have been driven to the point of absurdity who seem to be acting to the detriment of themselves now, but, as a matter of fact, it is part of the creator plan for your beautiful planet population revival that finds herself in the grip of inhumans who have been at the helm of the planet for centuries. Everything has become so apparent that it cannot be seen only by the blind. And thanks to the mass revival of people our activity is reaching its final stage, too. Believe me, my dear. We are supporting you not only at the subtle level now sending you salvational energies but at the physical level, too helping those who are implementing the final stage of their operation on deliverance of Earth from all the dark forces representatives embodied as humans. The number of them is huge indeed since all your society, all the countries of the world are run through by the corrupt net of the hidden government that almost all the heads of the countries have got into, as well as their governments and officials at all the levels of power. You see the impudent and unpunished way that all the disliked heads of the states that refuse to get under their control are physically got rid of, and, unfortunately, we do not always manage to protect them from danger. But what we manage to do is to control the airspace of Earth that is closely encircled by our spaceships. The last stronghold of the dark forces on Earth were their underground bases in Antarctica that are now completely seized and purified from all the participants of the projects that they have worked on for many decades. So now our attention is mostly focused on providing support to the Light Forces Alliance from the subtle level tracking all the movements in space so as to prevent any slightest failure in their program of disclosure that is to come to effect in the near time. These brave and courageous people need such escort because not only they put their lives at risk but also are objects to unceasing energy attacks for the side of the dark forces vestiges that still remain on your planet and who until their last breath do their best to fulfill the orders of their high patrons. I will not deal with the twists and turns of our work since the aim of my message is to support you and assure that at the subtle level everything is under control now. And now you have to do your part of work to show free will and make the final decision in favor transition with Earth to a new era of the fifth dimension. Unite in spirit, our dear ones. Show determination and firmness while asserting your interests and rights to dispose of your life and health. Then we will win a quick and decisive victory delivering humanity out of thousand year slavery. Sincerely loving you, Ashtar Sharon spoke to you. On behalf of the Galactic Federation and the spiritual hierarchy, we greet you. We would like to assure you that we are of the light, and that we come to you in the service of your creator to assist and advise you so that you may better understand and react to the changes which will soon be upon you and your planet. With your limited vision, and your relationship with self entedness and conflict, you may be tempted to suspect that we have come to harm or to conquer you. There are indeed forces in your universe who might have such intentions, but their powers have been largely neutralized at this time. I have already assured you and gladly assure you once again that we are of the light, and that we are here for your benefit. The time has now come for a general movement upwards, a sorting of those who are ready to move up, and those who are not. Your planet is to be cleansed physically as well as on the spiritual level, for she has suffered much harm in acting as your host. It is important that you have some idea of what lies immediately ahead and why it is to take place, so that you may prepare yourselves. This is our first task. You have collectively made great advances in science and technology, but in so doing, you have often neglected another important source of information, namely your intuition, in your obsession with things physical, things which can be seen, felt, measured and tested, you have gained the impression that if you cannot see or feel it, it cannot therefore exist. Your eyes are closed to any possibilities outside your own area of recognition, but I must tell you, 
that there is more unseen than is seen, there is more uncomprehended than comprehended, there is more to your world and your universe than you could presently imagine, the density of matter is important. Physical objects have different densities, people's physical frames have different densities, so also do worlds. We are of a lighter, finer density that you, as also are the manifestations which you call spirits or ghosts, place some pebbles in a sieve, then pour water over them and see how the finer density of water allows it to pass around, the denser pebbles. That is why ghosts can pass through walls, that is how our spacecraft can move about invisibly to your eyes, though we are able to make ourselves visible to your senses at will, that is why there is so much going on around you that is invisible to your eyes. Planet Earth at present exists on the densest possible level as a reflection of the environment in which you live and conduct yourselves and the lessons you have chosen to learn. Each planet or universe or civilization has its constitution, similar in spirit and in turn to the constitutions of your more evolved governments. The concept of constitution is to lay down the outer, absolute boundaries of approved behavior beyond which neither individuals nor governments may pass. Planet Earth has been given the gift of free will, as have many others, but unlike others, your free will has been given without boundaries, thus you have been able to go to extremes of violence and self-gratification at the expense of others, extremes which in other civilizations would not be permitted, in this way you yourselves, and all of us who observe you and experience your world by correlation, can learn of the effects which such actions can set in motion, but this situation will shortly come to an end for now is a time of sorting and of moving upwards. It is a time of revision, of assessment, of taking new paths. It includes your entire planet, and indeed a much wider circle of worlds beyond your own. Your planet is to be cleansed, and its people will move to new worlds according to their evolution and aspirations, in order to learn new lessons in new environments. This will give each individual the opportunity to review his or her life and attitudes and to consider the kind of future to which he or she aspires, having given you just a brief idea of what is to happen very shortly around you. I must now tell you of the task we have been given by Earth's spiritual guides and hierarchy, and how we propose to set about fulfilling our responsibilities. It is our intent to use what in your language might be referred to as the carrot and the stick. The stick is not, as you might at first think, a weapon to be raised in aggression or anger or envy. This is not our way, indeed the constitution of our lives and civilization does not permit any of these things. The stick we will use is a rod of protection, and it is strict, tolerating no exceptions. Already you will find that your weapons of war are losing their effectiveness. Over time these, physical weapons will disintegrate into dust, their aura of aggression and anger will be neutralized along with their physical form. You will also find that anything used as a weapon of aggression, even a stick or a fist raised in anger, will be stayed by an unseen hand. Ultimately, you will find that when any words are to be spoken in anger or aggression, the voice of the speaker will falter as if gently choking, so that such words may not be expressed. Finally, as the din of war is gradually stilled and a spirit of peace descends upon your planet, we hope to reinforce it with an enveloping blanket of love and goodwill. You must understand that although you may think that victory is an achievement providing its rewards, you should know that the continuance of war and competitive aggression which is a constant feature of your planet has taken its toll upon your emotions and your senses, creating a continuing tension. As this burden is progressively lifted you will find yourselves lightening, becoming more joyful, more able to see the beauty around you and the light in the souls of others. Perhaps you with your tradition of total free will, may feel that this is an unwarranted intrusion into your liberty, although you may well agree in principle that the neutralization of all anger and aggression, together with all weapons of war would be a wonderful thing, you may not feel altogether comfortable with its imposition by an alien and foreign force, yet I must tell you that such rules are not unusual. Indeed your planet is almost unique in permitting such activities, which are not within the constitutional bounds of other civilizations. Many of you may also feel that while an end to violence is a good thing in principle, it is necessary first of all to repay debts, to claim the eye for the eye. But I must tell you that such vendettas, such acts of violence followed by countervailance in the name of honor, these acts have been going on for centuries in your collective lives. Somewhere, 
At some time, the perpetuation of violence must stop. This is now the place and the time. I must also explain that if we are to help you, as we have been instructed to do, we must first ask you to be still. We cannot help and advise those who are too busy killing one another to listen to our words. If you could see your planet from outer space as we do all the time, you would see a murky aura of accumulated hate and aggression, and your ears would be deafened by the constant clamor and din of war, the shooting and the bombs, the cries of the wounded and the dying, and the destruction of so much of the physical assets of your civilization which you have, previously built with expenditure of great effort and planetary resources. If only the effort you have put into destruction and rebuilding could have been directed into preserving and enhancing of building upon building. Imagine how rich your civilization would now appear, but that is your destiny and it is not for us to question it, only to point out that if you are to listen, to be informed, to improve your conduct and make a right decision when needed to do so, then you must first be stilled. Our stick will be the rod of protection, ensuring that acts of aggression are halted so that the clash of war may be stilled and the spirit of aggression, of violence and revenge may be quietened. The carrot of persuasion will take the form of suggestions as to how you may conduct your lives more peaceably, more spiritually, with the reward that in so doing you may be more ready to move to a higher level of being. It is a hope that as you pause for a moment in your aggression and counter-aggression, when your ears are no longer filled with a din of war and your senses not fully preoccupied with getting the better of others before they get the better of you, in that stillness and space of neutrality you may be persuaded to begin afresh and to build for yourselves a society where relationships are based on mutual respect, non-aggression and cooperation, on construction rather than destruction. A daunting, perhaps even impossible task. No. Indeed it is much easier done than imagined, in other societies more developed than your own. There is one guiding principle of conduct between people. It is a simple rule. First, do no harm. You must start early with your very youngest children, as we also do, teaching them what is to us the most important rule of life, respect others as you would have them respect you. Think no unkind thoughts, say no unkind words, for one only puts others down in order to make oneself feel greater, learn to value yourself for what you are. Build upon your incarnated foundation, develop yourself and your natural gifts. Remembering only that you should enrich your own life without impoverishing that of others, emotionally, spiritually or physically, your governments too must reform themselves rapidly, for despite the belief which many hold that they live in a democracy, in truth few people trust their governments to act competently, honestly and efficiently. The purpose of government, in the words of your Thomas Jefferson, is to prevent men from injuring one another. If only you had but one government which did just that which ensured peace and true social justice among its people, acting productively without undue waste, with honesty and transparency, with the interests of the people, its customers, at heart, you would never believe the beneficial, almost magical effect it would have. With that one principle, there would be physical plenty for all to live challenging and rewarding lives in a pleasant environment on a respected planet. As you shed your aggressive competitiveness, competing only with ignorance to create knowledge, competing only with poverty to create wealth which all may share, conducting your collective lives according to the principle of mutual respect and cooperation, so all the dark, dank places you have created for yourselves will be changed and brightened. Those who have been put down will find new freedom to make their own contribution, and the harm done to your host planet can slowly be undone. There will be little enough time for this new spirit to take root. But if you can only pause from your aggression long enough to enjoy the stillness of peace, if you can order your collective affairs according to universal laws long enough to glimpse the rewards of peace, justice and cooperation, and if experiencing these things each of you can profit from your new environment in order to review your personal attitudes, your approach to yourself and to others, you will then be in a position to embrace a brighter future. It is our wish to remain with you and to communicate with you constantly in order to give you a wider view of that which you cannot see, of developments around you and how they will affect you, and in our behavior towards you, we will show you the creative, nurturing power of love, of mutual caring and assistance which we hope that you too will embrace among yourselves.